Welcome to My Smart Side. This video is a response to a recent video by Tyann. Hey look! It's an info card! There's also a link in the description. If you want to participate in Mega Fave Numbers, make a video about a number that is greater than 1 million, upload it to YouTube by September 2nd, 2020, and use hashtag MegaFaveNumbers so that Tyann can see it. There is more information in his video. I just found out that it was James Grime of Singing Banana that created the Mega Fave Numbers playlist. Look at that! Another info card! But Tyann was where I first heard about it. Math. As you can see on the left, there is a list of subtopics that we'll be discussing in this video. First, let's play a game. It is called the Tree Game. How do we play? We will draw a series of trees that satisfy these rules. Every tree has at least one leaf. The first tree has no more than one leaf, so that's just one leaf. The second tree has no more than two leaves, so that's one or two leaves. The third tree has no more than three leaves, so that's one, two, or three leaves, and so on. If we draw a tree that contains the same nearest common ancestry as an entire previous tree, that tree is removed, the game ends, and your score is the number of trees that you have. What is nearest common ancestry? Take two leaves, follow down as the ancestry, until you get to the same leaf, that's the common, and consider the first one you get to, that's the nearest. In other words, you find the closest leaf to two other leaves that has branches that can be traced to the two other leaves. Now we have moved to the tree function. The tree function finds how many trees are in the longest possible game with a certain number of leaf types. Let's find tree 1. That means we have one type of leaf. The first tree must have one leaf, and there is only one leaf to choose from, so we can put it there. The second tree can have one or two leaves. Or can it? Can it have one leaf? No, that would make the same tree. Can it have two leaves? No, it would still contain the first one. So, I have proved that tree 1 is 1. QED. Let's find tree 2. That means we have two types of leaves. I could start with either leaf, but it doesn't matter because the logic still works vice versa. I remind you that the first tree must have one leaf, so let's put this one there. The second tree can have one or two leaves. Let's start with one leaf, and there is one other leaf we can choose. Can we continue? No. The third tree has to contain either one of these one leaf trees. Let's change the second tree to a two leaf tree. It needs one more leaf, but which one? Well, it can't contain the first leaf because that is the first tree, so we add another of the second leaf. Can we continue now? Yes! We still can't start with the first leaf because that is the first tree, but we can start with the second leaf. As we can see, the second tree contains the third tree, but that is fine because trees can't contain earlier trees. The third tree can have up to three leaves. Can we add the first leaf? No, that is the first tree. Can we add the second leaf? No, that would make this the second tree. So I have proved that tree 2 is 3. QED. Let's try to find tree 3. That means we have three types of leaves. Hold your horses! I see tree 3 in the title of this video, and I mentioned that this is a response to Tyan's Mega Fave Numbers video, and response to Tyan's Mega Fave Numbers must be over 1 million. Okay, that brings us to the next subtopic. 
And we can move on now that you know how the tree game and the tree function work. Let's start with 1 million. That is a big number, right? In common everyday situations, that is a big number. In discrete mathematics, number theory, and set theory, that is a single grain of sand in the Sahara Desert. One million is the digit one followed by six digit zeros, and it can be expressed with ten to the six. Ten million is the digit one followed by seven digit zeros, and it can be expressed with ten to the seven. We add one to the exponent because we are multiplying another ten because ten million is ten times one million. Fun fact, the spelling of the search engine Google is a mistake. It was supposed to have the same name as Google, another big number, but one of the Google founders misspelled it without spell checking it, and of course, that misspelling was not already a registered domain. Google is the digit 1 followed by 100 digit zeros, and it can be expressed with 10 to the 100. Fun fact. If you search Google for recursion, it asks you, did you mean recursion? Let's apply recursion by putting a Google back into this big number finding algorithm. A Googleplex, which has nothing to do with complex numbers, is the digit one followed by a Google digit zeros, and it can be expressed with 10 to the Google, or 10 to the 10 to the 100. Next up is Graham's number, and I can tell you a quick backstory. Ronald Graham was working on a problem, and he defined an upper limit that is a big number. How big is this number? It is bigger than a Googleplex. If that is too much for your head to wrap around, let's go back to basic arithmetic. You know what addition is. Multiplication is repeated addition. Exponentiation is repeated multiplication. We can use Knuth's up arrow notation to continue that pattern. One up arrow is basic exponentiation. Write the second number of copies of the first number and put multiplication signs between them. Two up arrows are tetration, which is repeated exponentiation. Write the second number of copies of the first number and turn them into a power tower. Which means you put one up arrow between them. I failed to include that in the script. Three up arrows are repeated tetration, which is pentation. Write the second number of copies of the first number and put two up arrows between them. And now that you understand the pattern, I can show you how Graham's number is defined. For this, we need a list. We will call it G for Graham. G1, the first number of list G, is 3, 4 up arrows, 3. G2 is 3, G1 up arrows, 3. G3 is 3, G2 up arrows, 3. Keep following that pattern until you get to G64, which is Graham's number. attempt to play with tree 3, but first, I will quickly recap the big numbers that we found. 1 million is big with common everyday numbers, 10 million is bigger, Google is a lot bigger, Googleplex is a whole lot bigger, Graham's number is a ridiculously whole lot bigger. Now for tree 3. As always, the first tree is just the first leaf. 
The second tree is the second leaf connected to the second leaf. The third tree can be the second leaf connected to the third leaf connected to the third leaf. The fourth tree can be the second leaf connected to the third leaf and connected to the third leaf connected to the second leaf. The fifth tree can be the third leaf connected to 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 the third leaf. The sixth tree can be the third leaf connected to the second leaf and connected to the third leaf which is connected to the second leaf and connected to the third leaf. The seventh tree can... No, this is getting too complicated. Spoiler alert! Tree 3 eats Graham's number for breakfast. Well, that would be like me eating a single raisin for breakfast with nothing else. One grain of oatmeal instead? I don't know. If you learned something new, click the like button. If you want to learn more things, click the subscribe button. If you want math puzzles, subscribe to Tyann. If you want more math, subscribe to Singing Banana. They don't upload very often, but subscriptions will let you know when they do. You will learn more from me next time on my smart side. Apparently, okay, these are not prescription, they're fake glasses. Apparently my eye has gotten used to me not wearing these, but then when I put these back on everything is very sharp. You can read the script uh, with a link in the description.